I'm going to show you how to make your WooCommerce cart and checkout pages match your website's look and feel. Today I'll be teaching you a simple way to make your cart and checkout pages more cohesive with the rest of your website. It's really not that hard, so let's go ahead and get started. Now for this tutorial, we'll be using the free version of Elementor alongside the free version of Shop Engine, who have kindly sponsored this particular video series. Now we'll start by building the cart page before moving on to customizing the checkout page. So first, let's just log into our dashboard. And from the dashboard, we're gonna go ahead and go into Shop Engine, and we're gonna choose Builder Templates. Inside the Builder Templates, as we've seen before in this series, this is a list of all the templates we previously created. For this example, we're gonna go ahead and click Add New. And from there, we're gonna give this a name. Let's call this Default Cart. We'll change the type to Cart. We'll set this as Default. And then we can choose whether we want to start with a blank template or whether we want to choose one of the pre-designed designs. Let's start with a blank template. And let's just say Edit with Elementor. That will go ahead and save the changes, create the template and open up Elementor, ready for us to start working. Now, if we take a look at the left-hand panel, you can see we've got two different sections. We've got Shop Engine General and Shop Engine Cart. Shop Engine General are tools that we can use on any of our templates, things like filterable product lists, product category lists, and so on. The Shop Engine Cart gives us a collection of widgets specific to the cart template that we're currently working with. So we're gonna focus on using those in this example. Now, it's worth noting at this point, you can still use any of the normal Elemental or Elemental Pro if you're using it widgets in conjunction with the various different Shop Engine widgets to create a unique design. And we're gonna be combining some of these as we go through this particular tutorial. So let's go ahead and start off with the most important section right now, and that's the cart table. Let's drag that into our design. And you can see this now creates the table that will show us the products, the price, the quantity, the subtotal, and gives a selection of different buttons. If we look at the left-hand section, you can see we now have some controls over how this looks. You can see we can hide the continue shopping button. We can select that, and that removes the button. And we can also hide the clear all button, just leaving us with the update card. Let's switch those back on for now. Let's go ahead and open up the style tab. Inside here, we can now control the look and feel of every aspect of this particular widget. So we want to adjust things like the product image scaling. We can do that. We can just increase the size of this, set this to whatever size that we want in relation to the design. You can adjust things like the quantity, the table footer, the table header, and all other aspects. So let's change the table header to make it a little bit more in keeping with our color scheme. We'll change the background color to our save global green. And you can see that now shows up in our design. And let's adjust the text to make this another one of our global colors in this example, just a normal white. So now we've adjusted that to make it a little bit more in keeping with our overall design. So using the options inside the style setting, we can easily customize the look and feel of this. I'm happy with the way it looks right now, so we're gonna leave that section as it is and move on to the next set of widgets. So let's go back to our widget picker and let's take a look at the other three options we have. Our cart total, cross sells and return to shop. Let's create a new section. Let's set this into two columns and let's go ahead and drop in the widget that allows us to see the cart totals. We'll drag and drop that over to the right hand side and you can see that now drops that option inside there. Let's make a bit of room for this. We'll just add some margin at the top and bottom. So now in the same way, we can go ahead and we can adjust the styling of this if we want to. Again, you can see you've got all the options available to us for the table, the table row, the input, checkout and update buttons, and so on. So let's change the checkout and update buttons. And again, make that a little bit more in keeping with our design and color scheme. Let's start by changing the background color of our button. Again, we're gonna choose one of our global colors and choose our global green. You can see that now already starts to tie things together to give us a much more consistent look and feel. If we want to do things like apply a border radius to our buttons, we can do that simply by adding in a border radius value. For this example though, we'll leave that as it is to give us the nice squared edges. So you could go ahead and use these tools to customize the look and feel of everything you want inside this section. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the look of this. I want to keep this clean and simple to tie into the design we've got as our site. There's one other thing that I want to add in. So let's go ahead and open up our widget section and we're gonna use the option for cross sell. So cross sells basically just allow your site visitors when they come to the checkout or the cart page, depending on how you set things up, they can see products that are related to the product or products they have in their shopping cart. This is a great method of increasing your sales total during the checkout and cart pages. So let's go ahead and add this cross sell section underneath our cart. And you see this now pulls in a selection of different products. Now this is just a placeholder template. We can customize this and don't pay any attention to the products that are in there. These will be different based upon the product or products that are in your checkout or cart pages. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can customize about the look of this. If you don't want to use the slider option, if you want to limit this to X number of products, you can simply disable the slider. You can see now that just gives us a selection in this example of four different products. We can also enable and disable various different options, things like the flash sale, sale price, card button, and so on. So we may say we don't want to show a sale and the sale price, but we want to show the card button, or we might want to disable that completely. You can adjust the number of products and the number of columns, and you can also control the number of columns based upon the device that you're currently viewing this particular template file on. So we're going to change this over. We're going to set this to be three products and three columns. If we wanted to change these based upon different devices, we can simply switch to that and adjust the values accordingly. Really, really simple. Let's go back to our desktop. If you hop over into the advanced section, you can see now we can choose how we want to order these products. We've got a range of different options from date, title, price, through to modified date and menu order. For this example, let's set them to be price. We're going to set them to be ascending. And you can see now we've got the lowest priced item to the highest priced item. So again, a great way of helping people purchase more items as part of your cart page. If we hop over to the style section, now we can go ahead and tweak the look and feel of this. So if you want to adjust the alignment for the text, you can do that inside here. You can adjust the column gap, the button spacing, adjust your image, your title, and so on. So you can set those to whatever values you want to be in keeping with the design. Now, if you remember back to the beginning of this video, I said that we can also use normal element or widgets in conjunction with the widgets we have as part of Shop Engine. So let's do just that. Let's put a title in this section so people that see it will know exactly what these products relate to. Let's come back over to our widgets. We're going to scroll down until we find title. We'll pop that into this section. We'll set this to be H3 and we'll just put in a title. So now people can see that these are products that they may also like based upon what's in their shopping cart. Again, we can go ahead and style this any way that we want. So if we want to change the typography, we could do just that. Let's just make things a little lighter and change the size of these a little. There we go, pretty cool. So now we've created our custom cart page with an upsell section at the bottom and a nice clean and simple design. Let's update this and we've now created everything we need and it's become active on our site as the global template for our shopping cart. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our new shopping cart in action. If we come to our cart page, you can see there's our shopping cart with our may also like upsells at the bottom. Everything is looking clean and in keeping with our overall design aesthetic. So that's how easy it is to create your custom cart template. Now the checkout page is an incredibly important part of your entire sales sequence. So making sure you have an optimized layout for conversion is a key component in this entire process. So let's see how easy it is to not only change the look, but also streamline the entire checkout process for our potential buyers. So once again, we're back into our dashboard into build a template section as part of Shop Engine, and we're going to go ahead and click add new. This time we're going to give this a name and we're going to call this default checkout. We'll change the type to checkout. We'll set this to be our default template, and then we can set whether we want to use a pre-designed layout or we want to start from scratch. Let's choose one of the predefined layouts so we can see what they're like. Let's choose this last option and we'll say edit with Elementor. So we now have a fully designed template ready for us to start using or to start editing if we want to. So let's take a quick look at what's actually going on. If we look at the actual checkout section itself, you can see we've got the billing details, the product, the pricing, coupon codes, those kinds of things. Each one of these is an individual widget. If we go to the left hand side, you can see the shop engine checkout gives us seven different options to choose from. The coupon form, checkout form, additional shipping, those kinds of things. So most of these are being used in this particular layout. If we select any of these, you can see that now opens up the option for that specific widget. In this case, this is the billing section. So now we have control over all the billing options for this particular widget. You can see we can enable or disable the title. So if you want to create something a little bit more unique, we can do just that. Let's re-enable that. If we come into field visibility, this is where we can choose to show or hide any of the default fields that we've got as part of the billing form. This is great if you want to streamline things or you have information that really isn't relevant, things like company name. Let's disable that. And you can see now that just removes that from the billing details form. So we could go through and control exactly what's going to be displayed at any point. We may not want to have things like phone numbers. Well, we can easily hide that if we want to. So now we get a much more streamlined form. You've also got control over the things like the form container. So we can control the background, the alignment, any padding, we can control the labels, the input, 
all those values are controllable inside here. Again, we've got additional widgets then for the additional information. So if you want to allow notes, you can add that inside here. If, for example, you don't need that, or you could be dealing with digital products, you may not want this, well, you could simply just remove that from the design. And you can see, gone straight away. If we come over then to the right-hand side, you can see we've got another widget inside here, and this is the checkout order review, which shows you a simplified version of what you see inside your card, the items, the subtotal, the total, and those kinds of things. So again, we can go ahead and we can style this to be in keeping with our design. For example, this blue color doesn't work. So we need to change those values. So let's just open up the table footer section and inside there you can see we've got things like the price color. Well, we can go ahead and change that. So let's set that to our global save green color and you can see that now updates inside there. We could do exactly the same then for any other widget in this design. So we can easily come in, change these colors so they're all in keeping with our design. Finally, we've got the option to place our order and we're going to change the color of this over as well and also come into the button and change that inside there. So you can see you could very easily take one of these pre-designed templates and start to customize it to get exactly what you want, remove the items you don't want, change the color, the styling and those kinds of things. Everything is controllable inside you, including the content in each of the billing forms. So let's go ahead and update this template and let's take a look at this in action. So from our cart page, we're just simply gonna go ahead and proceed to checkout. And there's our custom checkout page. Everything is laid out the way that we've just configured it. And we could go ahead and carry on editing, styling, doing whatever we want to this to get it absolutely pixel perfect. You now have all of the tools you need to customize your checkout process using Shop Engine and Elementor. If you want to learn how to customize all the parts of your online store through WooCommerce, check out this playlist now. It's got tons of really useful and cool tutorials. Now, as always, all the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.